Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me on this short tutorial on how to block a shawl or half if you want to use the Shetland dialect on a wooden frame. Now I saw this being used in Shetland and I thought it was a brilliant tool. First off I use a bit of pearl cotton. Now I say a bit and I'm going to say a lot. Vice one, little spool like this and that should be enough. Now I take that pearl cotton and tie a loop on one end. And I do this because later when I'm lace, I have the shawl wet and I'm lacing it up on the frame it helps to have this hole to slip over one of the pegs. Now, it's been my experience that it works better for me if I lace up my shawl with my pearl cotton before I put it into water. Just turns out better for me. Now, I take a darning needle and a lot of pearl cotton and I go in and out of every single point. Now I don't want to do that too tight. I want to give plenty of room. And generally speaking, the more room you give with your pearl cotton, the better it's going to be. Now I tend to give uh, several yards at every corner extra just so that when I get it on the frame I can stretch it out and I have room to play with it because it's just easier if you do it that way instead of getting it really tight and then being frustrated and have to re-lace it up. So, in and out, the same direction every single point, all the way around, giving yourself lots of leeway. We're doing this very loosely. Now, I'm not going to make you watch me lace up the entire thing. That would be a little bit boring, probably. But, I'll do the rest of this, then I'll take my half, and I'll put it in a little bit of cool water, fully saturate it, and let it just soak up and become really nice and wet. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about the frame. I'm using a frame that my husband built for me. See this? Now, this is a one by two piece of lumber that Chris picked up at the hardware store and he's stained it a nice walnut color because I thought that would be pleasing. The pegs are in holes that he used a drill press to drill about halfway down. It does The hole doesn't go all the way through but these are bits of dowel rod and you're going to need several dowel rods and four pieces of lumber. These are placed three inches apart because that's about how wide I told him that my points usually are when I'm blocking a shawl. So, three inches of point apart and a lot of pegs. Four pieces of lumber and you're going to need some way to attach those four pieces of lumber together at the corners. I like a bird cage, which is a drawer pull. Now, the reason I like this shape, let me move it over here. There you go. The reason I like this shape is because it's easier for me to grab with my hands when I'm layering up the corners of the frame and then I need to screw and I'm using an extra long screw on this drawer pull 
not the screw that came with it. And I'll show you more about this when I put the frame together. But I keep four of these and my screwdriver and my pearl cotton all in a baggie attached to my four pieces of wood. Now, when the frame is in use, obviously, it's pretty good size. But when it's not in use, it's just these four pieces of wood with the baggie strapped to them. I can put it upright in a corner, and it's not in anyone's way. Seems pretty easy, right? Once the frame is in use, however, it's pretty good size. I tend to put it together flat on the ground, usually out here on my deck. It seems to work better, and I have plenty of room, because I do live in a fairly small house. Now, once the frame is put together and the shawl is on the frame, and I'll show you more of that in a bit, you can then stand the frame up against a wall or a barn. Now, I'm going to finish up lacing my shawl. I'll be back in just a moment. So now it's time to put the frame together. My shawl is laced up and soaking. So, I'm back here on the deck ready to put the frame together. Now you can see here that I have crossed one over the other. I'm going to use my knee to hold this up just so it's a little bit easier for you to see. I'm going to take my birdcage and my screw apart. Now I know that the size of my finished shawl having blocked it a few times before, but you may know the expected size of your finished shawl from the pattern or just a guesstimate. Give yourself at least three or four inches taller and wider so that you have plenty of room to block it. Now, it's okay to get it, the frame set up much wider than you really need. It's better than getting it too small and having to take the frame apart once you've got things on the pegs and then stretch it. So I'm going to take the screw and put it through what I happen to know is my usual size. It's the third hole in. And I'll show you these holes again here in just a minute. Now Chris has drilled five little small pinholes that are the size of my screw. And there it's all the way through. And I'm going to attach my birdcage. easy. It's important when you're putting your frame together to always make sure that if this piece is on top in one corner, this piece, same piece, is on top in the other corner. That way it lies flat. Now, time for me to do the other side. Now here is my hat soaking in cool water with a little bit of wool wash. You will notice that I pulled both ends of the pearl cotton out so I wouldn't have to search for them later. But it's saturated and ready to load on the frame. You will notice that I've plopped my wet shawl down in the middle of the frame. 
it's ready to load up and I usually start at a corner just makes it a little bit easier the first thing I do is I put that little loop over a peg then I find my corner based on that particular spine if you want to call it that then I start putting each little wrap over a peg. Now I'm up to the second corner and you can see it's not quite right. It's not quite even. My lacings are loose here but tighter down here and that's okay. I'll be able to come back and adjust those closer to the end. But now I want to line up this spine right here with that corner and continue on around. Now I'm making my way up the last side to where the beginning was, right here. Now my lacing looks a little haphazard and that is pretty typical. Now I've just pulled that through the last one and I'm going to start the process of tightening it now. Now I'm going to tighten a little bit just by pulling the ends and I pulled that one completely off the peg so I need to tuck it back in but I'm going to just wrap that pearl cotton around that outer peg then I'm going to come to each one and if I need to tighten it a little more, because it's got a lot of slack and the center of the shawl is very, very wet. That's where the most weight is. So I'm tightening these up and I may even loop them over an extra peg. Or I may wrap it around the peg a couple of times. This is the process that takes the longest is tightening it up. What I want you to see in this shot is that not every bit of the pearl cotton just goes from point to peg. Sometimes when I was tightening it up I had to wrap that pearl cotton around it and I had to pull up tension like this. So this particular one is wrapped several times. This one, I pulled up a lot of tension just to get it a little bit of a better point coming there once I had all of it on the pegs of the frame. I've got my hat completely laced up on the frame. And I've been around the perimeter of it two to three times, tightening up that pearl cotton. I think it looks pretty good. So, now's the time to take it over and set it up leaning against the barn so that the wind will whistle on one side and the other. And it'll dry pretty quick out of the sun here on the deck this afternoon. Thank you for joining me on this short tutorial on how to block a shawl using a Shetland hat frame.